Welcome back to the Subspace Game YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about several different things, uh, so let's jump in. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is, um, you know, I was uh, using the game here. I hit, let's hit play, uh, new. And when I switched to overhead mode, um, I was having a little issue with trying to move these, these uh, objects here. So if I click on them near the top, you'll notice that it kind of jumps so that now my cursor's down at the bottom. And I didn't like that a lot because, um, or very much, because as I was moving this, sometimes I'd have to move it just a little bit to align it to where I wanted it to hit the ball. And uh, when it would jump like that, it was hard for me to remember exactly where the object had been. So let's go in and change that real quick. Uh, let's head over to the code. We're going to be, as you can see here, we're in the aim cam AI on mouse button down. Let's come back over here. Now the first thing that I did that I changed was this line right here. So previously, this was get first hit collider and it was just, we're just trying to figure out which object we were hitting. I've changed it to get first hit collider X. And as if we click on the function, we'll see that it takes a whole bunch of return values. There's like, I don't know, 12 return value or nine return values. Um, same arguments are passed in, but basically it just returns a lot more information. What I really am worried about is the X, Y, and Z is what I want to get. So um, in order to get to the X, Y, and Z, I had to fill in these, these other things before that I don't really care about, but they're just there as filler. So I added them to my local um, declarations and then I stuck them down here. And you'll notice that I went to X, Y, and Z, but I didn't go through I, J, K, because I don't care about those. Um, I believe that's the normal, um, the angle at which the um, ray is hitting the, the object. I don't care about that. So we're just going through till we get to X, Y, and Z. And that's giving us the position at which the ray, or in this case, the cursor, when we click on an object, that's the object in the X, in the global coordinate system. That's the coordinates where the, the mouse is clicking on that object. Hope I'm not confusing you there. Um, and that comes in handy because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, when I click on the object, I want to get an idea of where I clicked so that um, as I move the object around, rather than having it jump um, over to where my cursor is, I can just give it an offset. Now, to kind of explain what I'm talking about here, let me open up paint and I'm going to do a little um, little chart here, well, a little diagram. So let's say that we have our, our object and for whatever reason, the object location is being reported as this part of the object here. And we're clicking over here. Well, what's happening in the game right now is that as soon as we click over here and we start to move, well, the location, um, the object and everything moves so that it's down here. So then you have something that looks like this. Okay, so this is the object itself, but it jumps down here. So now the, the origin of the object and the place that we're clicking are one and the same um, because of the way I'm doing the code. So what we want to do is we want to get the offset. So I'm interested in the X, Y, and Z that I just got out of the function is telling me the location that I clicked. So that's this right here. Okay. And here's the origin. So I'm curious to know what the, this distance is and what this dist distance is. Okay. So we're dealing with, uh, you know, in this case, it's going to be, um, well, the Z value because we're dealing with 3D and this is the X value right here. So it's the difference. It's the offset that we have to adjust for. And I'll show you how that's going to work out in the code. So let me jump back over to here. Now that I've got the X, Y, and Z value where we're clicking, now I want to go and get the X, Y, and Z value of the object itself, the location that we're currently at. So let's put that right here. Okay, so it looks like that. So what we're doing is 
we are getting origin x, y, and z, which is the origin of the object, and we're just calling the get translation, and we're interested in knowing what the moving object is. So this is the object that we're trying to move, and then we're going to do that in the global space. And then I'm setting some variables here. Now I'm doing this on the moving object. We had created that movable AI. It's this AI that handles the moving of the object. And so I've created these values. There's an X offset and a Z offset. So basically I'm setting both of those. And the way I get those values is I take X, which is the location that we clicked, and I subtract the location of the object. And then I do the same thing for Z. So I'm getting the difference between where we clicked and where the object is located. So let's jump over to um, the movable AI. And let's add those variables in real quick. We had n x offset. That was a number. And default is 0. We'll say the um, offset between uh, the location of the object and where we clicked in the object. Okay, and let's, uh, I'm going to copy that there because we'll use that in the next one as well. And then we're also going to have a Z offset. That's a number, it's zero. Paste it in. Okay, so now we have our X um, and Z offset. Now we also want to go in and we're going to make a change in the on mouse move code. Before we were just translating, we were just moving the object to um, the location of where we had clicked. So let me change that. So that will look like, let's just replace this whole thing here. Okay, so we are doing, I don't know what happened there. Let's, okay, there we go. So we're going to translate the object, and this time we're going to take the, now the x, y, and z in this particular function here is we did the same thing from before where we get the, where the cursor was, we get the x, y, and z values, but now we're plugging this offset in. So we're going to take the x value and then subtract the offset, and same thing with the z value, we'll subtract the offset, and then uh, the y value is just going to come from you know what, this should have been, uh, I think I went back through and renamed some of this stuff. So let me name this back to object. Uh, I was trying to do this to make things a little bit clearer. So I renamed these variables from like C, X, C, Y, and C, Z to object. All right, so we have the object Y, and then we have um, the X and Z values that we pulled out of where the cursor is located, but then we're giving it this offset. So it's always going to be, um, as soon as we click on the object, it's going to allow us to move it, but it's not going to jump. And I hope that made, made sense. Um, sometimes I get things in my head and I uh, try to explain it, but it makes more sense to me in my head than it does anywhere else. Okay, so as you'll notice, we clicked and we're moving and the cursor is still in the location that we had clicked on the object. So the object didn't jump. Um, if we click on the bottom, the cursor stays on the bottom, the object moves to that location. If we click on the top, same thing. If we click on a side, so we no longer get that jump. And that was important to me because I, uh, I didn't like the way it jumped. It's, it's going to be a little bit easier this way, I think. 